Hello and welcome. Welcome to Parenting Differently, where we leave behind the old way of parenting and allow the gifts of parenthood to raise us. Different to how we were raised, different to how society is telling us to raise our children, maybe even different to how you expected you'd be raising them. Just different. I'm your host, Anya Simmons. I have a book coming out very shortly and I'll, all of the links will be here below to purchase it, Parent From This Place, because I realized coming into parenting as a trained British nanny, thinking I knew everything there was to know about children, I was surprised that I didn't, because I didn't realize the heart-to-heart -heart connection, and I didn't realize how they were raising me at the same time as I was raising them. My book is called Parent From This Place, How Yoga Changed the Way I Parented, and uh, it truly transformed how I parented. And this podcast is such a passion to bring to you people who are choosing to parent differently. Today's episode, we have Karen Yates, a financial coach, financial alignment coach, actually, and a uh, pretty spectacular lady who she travels the world with her husband and her two children. And she knew she wanted to live her life of her own. I wanted to live my life of my own choosing use her words I wanted to live my life of my own choosing powerful stuff I look forward to meeting her so hello hello and welcome Karen I'm so happy to have you here on parenting differently uh, thank you so much for having me good good so let's dive in before we get to I did a little tidbit of your story but I'm excited to know more so please tell us a bit more about who you are who you're parenting your parenting journey absolutely so my name is Karen Yates and I have two children I have a 14 year old son Trevor and a nine-year-old daughter Brenna mm -hmm. and a little bit I'll just preface it here I know yeah. we'll get into this story but in 2018 my husband and I were living a normal life. You know, we had jobs, cars, house, vacations, kids were in public school. It was just a normal everyday life. And unfortunately, we were at a very low point in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And it was not helped by financial stress. Mm -hmm. Our bank account was at roughly zero. <laughs> and, yeah. And we realized that we had to do something different or we weren't going to make it despite the fact that we'd been together more than 20 years. It just, we were at that point where we had to do something different. And so we started talking and talking and talking and talking. <laughs> and we did our own form of therapy through talking. And through that talking, we really came to realize that we had the same goals, that we really wanted to spend more time with each other and with our kids. Mm -hmm. At the time, they were uh, 12 and 5 at the time. Okay. And we um, realized that we wanted to spend more time with them, have wonderful memories, and we wanted to form bonds with them that would last, you know, into their adult years and be, you know, have them want to be part of our lives once yeah. they became adults. Love it. And you know, there was a lot involved with this. You know, I wasn't able to spend the time that I wanted with them because of my job, because of my career. Um, you know, the nine to five was really, you know, a seven to five kind of thing. And right. it, it just wasn't there. And so we came up with this idea <laughs> that, you know, when it- <laughs> Do tell, do tell. <laughs> is this crazy? Okay, you know, I'll admit it was a crazy idea. I said, you know, what if we left? What if we left the States? That's where we were. We were actually right smack dab in the middle in Kansas. Okay. And I said, what if we left and pursue this dream that we had to travel around the world. And we'd always thought we were gonna travel, mm -hmm. but we, were, we thought that we had to wait until retirement. Oh, interesting. And we said, okay, we're 20 years into our marriage here. We want to create memories with our kids. We're not happy where we're at. Mm -hmm. So why don't we do something different? And so I'll admit it's a very crazy question. <laughs> <laughs> My husband proposed it and he's like, what do you think? And I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know anyone who's done this. How is this possible? Right? Exactly. And I had had thoughts about, you know, maybe ditching the house and getting in an RV and traveling around the U.S. But when you think about, you know, completely removing yourself from the environment that you're familiar with mm -hmm. and doing something very different, you know, I told him, I looked him in the eye. And I said, well, to be very honest with you, it scares the heck out of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And he responded, well, it kind of scares me too. <laughs> but the next day I went to work and I'm just thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And the whole day and the next day and the next day, and we just kept talking about it. And the more we started talking about it, the more I started thinking about it, mm -hmm. I, the pros and the cons, I started weighing them. And I'm like, wow, there's a lot of really positive things about ditching this lifestyle that's not making us happy yeah, and creating amazing. one of our own. Yeah. And how did you bring your kids, because they were a little smaller then, how was it just were they part of the discussion or it was parents are deciding and this is, well, you know, this is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that took some time because we definitely didn't want to introduce this idea before we had had a chance to talk about it. it makes sense. You know, we don't want to yeah. put this, you know, this beautiful prize up there and then say, yeah, we changed our mind. We don't really <laughs> want to a, do that. I know you're looking forward to that, but. <laughs> yeah. And so we talked about it for several months before we really came to this place where we were both convinced that this was something that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now we still had a lot of things to figure out how we're going to afford to do this. You know, right. the job that I had, I, I worked as a chemist. You can't do that remotely. Right. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's no remote possibility with that. True. So, okay, we have to come up with a way to make income, you know, and there was just a lot, a lot of thinking that went involved with this and talking. Um, from everything you know like how do we parent how do we homeschool right. how do we you know what are our expectations of this mm. um so it wasn't just all the pros right you know, we, we definitely don't beaches <laughs> beaches that sounds like yeah. a good pro <laughs> exactly oh my gosh well it, it ended up being that way we lived next to the beach for like 18 oh months God. and it was oh amazing God. but yes we definitely weighed the cons you know like okay we have to homeschool so we're going to be homeschooling while we're doing a business and living in a foreign country and you know all of these things came into play so we let that percolate between the two of us for quite some time right and it was probably about three, four months later, where we had decided, you know what, this is something that we really feel passionate about. Right. We really feel that we want to do it. And so we approached our son first, being the older one. Mm -hmm. uh, he was 12 at the time. Okay. So he was, uh, yeah, <laughs> he was not entirely on board at right. first. Right. We had, he had moved several times with us across state lines and you know different friends different schools all of the works and at that point when we told him we had just moved about a year previously oh whoa. okay <laughs> so now he's like wait i just settled in and now you're picking me up and we're gonna move like where yeah. you know <laughs> yeah and you don't even really know where <laughs> absolutely not at that point we didn't know and so we just started talking about it with him more Mm -hmm. And we kind of avoided bringing our daughter into it at that time because right. she was six at the time. And we're like, okay. oh, my gosh, like we we don't want to like just bring this, bring this on her. And we were having conversations between the two of us about how do we kind of prep this for her to make this a positive for her? Right, right. We were concerned she's the more social of the two. Mm -hmm. And so we were concerned if she's going to be upset about leaving her friends. You know, once again, we just moved them a year before so right. new friends and and we were you know just concerned about that and knowing that you know months to a six-year-old is like a lifetime yeah yeah <laughs> I comprehend that yes exactly yeah. and at that point when we told our son we had actually set a date that was about nine months out oh okay and so we're like okay nine months for a six-year-old is like forever and yeah, a day like it'll be every day like is it today is it tomorrow is it this weekend right <laughs> right and so we waited about another month and a half for her and then we were purchasing airline tickets and we're like okay you know what we need to bring her into this right so we'd been kind of gently laying some groundwork mm -hmm. and <laughs> we told her and it was like that she heard mom wasn't going to go to work every day and she was like let's I mean, go oh fantastic wow when did yeah, we leave? yeah oh so she sort of really helped reimburse your reason for doing this absolutely she was like wait i get to spend more time with mom like let's go now yeah yeah how much longer do you have to work mom <laughs> <laughs> wow oh that's that's something that's really incredible so what do you think you were um 
learning from your children about this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, from the two of them, it was very different responses, right? Like mm -hmm. our son was a little bit more restrained about it. Mm -hmm. And and we were very, very upfront. You know, we didn't want him to be in high school. Okay. Before we made this move, he was in middle school. Okay. And like, you know, by the time you're in high school, those bonds start to be a little bit stronger. There's activities that you're really looking forward to, you know, throughout high school, yeah. you know, he was running track and it's like, oh, you can be on the track team. You can go to state meets. You can, you know, mm -hmm. all of this. And we're like, man, we don't want to wait until he's in high school to do this because then it would feel like it was even more um, cutting him off from right, that. Right, right. And so with him, it was just more conversations about, you know, like there are positives and having to, to really sit down and have those conversations with him. Whereas with our daughter, you know, we'd laid a little bit more foundation mm -hmm. and she was just, I mean, one, I think she was younger, so more open to a new experience. Mm -hmm. And it was just, <laughs> her acceptance was just so incredible to see That's really, amazing. you know, here you have this little girl who's just like over the moon thinking about, wait, I get to spend more time with mom. Right. Right. And dad too. But yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. Wow. Wow. And so up until that point, if we talk about parenting up until that point, um, you were two working parents, uh, the children going to school, you had moved a few times, you said, so right. um, what went sort of, I'm wondering the steps it took to be brave enough to say I'm going to parent differently than like because obviously homeschooling and you know but also that emotional support when you're also a bit scared right like so so what mm -hmm. how did you handle that yeah it was really it really was the in-depth conversation with my husband I mean mm -hmm. we really we went through like every scenario <laughs> <laughs> like realizing I mean it one example really is realizing that, okay, if we're going to be moving around the world, going to different places, mm -hmm. the likelihood of our children marrying someone who lives on a different continent is really high. You know, if you stay in Kansas, the likelihood of them marrying someone from a different country is relatively low. Right. Okay, so now we have the possibility of them marrying someone from a different country. Okay, that's fine. But what if they each marry someone from a different continent? You know, not just a different country, literally a different continent. Right. This right. is a very real possibility. Mm -hmm. And we had this discussion. We're like, you know, discussion. you don't have the same mindset anymore that, that you've been on this path, right? right. You're, you know, we were on this normal path, you know, go mm -hmm. to school, get a job, get married, house, kids, right. work till you retire. We were right. on that path. Mm -hmm. And what happens? The kids grow up and they get married and they have a house and your grandparents eventually. And and they're within, you know, a flight, you know, a couple hour yeah. flight or, mm -hmm. you know, a few hours of drive. Sure, sure. That's normal. And now we're having this thought that what if they live on different continents? Yeah. And we really explored that because we're like, okay, that's very different. <laughs> I love that you did really all the research possible to get yourself to the place of, although this is your dream, there's a dream in there for them to have that life too. Yes, right? it's it, it's not. Um, and I, I so admire that, that that you were able to, you know, you I'm sure you had pros and cons as everything. Right. But even just, you know, this is going to be like, I guess you're thinking like character development. This is going to, sh to show you the world, you know, absolutely it is. Wow, a blessing to see people to meet people. But then there's the yes. other side of their own. I mean, for your son, how was he when you first took off in the plane and landed somewhere how open was he, was he still a little closed no he was he was ready he was like okay this okay. is what we're doing and and we're just gonna go with it and uh, embrace it but yeah we definitely consider that you know showing them the world showing them how different people different cultures live you know that it's not all this rosy glow that you know you're not in this bubble of, yeah, yeah. of protective bubble where mm -hmm. you, know, you don't see the poverty, you don't see um, how other people live completely differently than you do. Right, right, yeah, wow. 
Mm-hmm. And, and so how long have you guys been traveling? Almost two years now. Um, so we spent a month in the U.S. traveling from Kansas, in the middle of Kansas to Las Vegas, where my in-laws live. Okay. And we visited like as many national parks as we could. <laughs> we did all the hiking and the camping and we were like, we don't know when we'll have this opportunity again. Right. And yeah, it was almost two years ago that we took off ah. and we were in Southeast Asia. So we started in Bali. Okay. One of the things my husband had found was a conference actually for families that travel. Oh, who knew? <laughs> I know. He just, he randomly just Googled it. He's like, well, there's a conference for drop shipping. There's a conference for this. There's a conference for this. Is there a conference for families that travel? And he found this conference and it was in Bali and that's what set our timeline. And it was absolutely the best experience that we could have started our journey with because we went there and we met like our tribe. And I never understood that term before, Mm -hmm. you know, a tribe. And then we went and we met these people that just understood the desire to travel, understood the desire to do something different. I understood the, the trials of homeschooling and yeah. the problems that travel introduces that you don't oh, anticipate. Right, right. And it was yeah. absolutely the best thing. And our kids met other kids. They had a completely separate children's program. So the kids were involved with other kids their own age. They've met friends that they still keep in touch with. Mm. And it was just the most incredible thing. So we went to Bali, which, you know, for us, it was like, okay, we're really doing this. You know, right. we're not, we're not going to Canada. We're not going to Mexico. That's, that's, you know, just over yeah. the border. Mm-hmm. No, we're, we're going halfway around the world. And it was absolutely the best experience we could have had. Right, right. So your learnings there then from your children and how they adapted and how open they were or how was that? Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Cause they were both like, okay, this is brand new for us. And a lot of the kids there had been traveling longer. Okay. Some of them were brand new. Some of them hadn't actually started. They, their parents were in the planning stages and they're like, well, if we go to this conference, it'll just kind of help us along. Right, right. So they met the gamut of people. I mean, there were family, there was one family there that had been traveling for, 18 years, you know, they literally raised their kids on the road. And like, my mind is blown because they were doing this before the internet, right? You know, (laughs) before the smartphone, you know, before, you know, like uh, it boggles my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, you are truly the trailblazer. And I am like, just blown away. And so, yeah, they were both really open to making new friends. Uh, The first day we went to pick them up for lunch because they had the parents do their thing and mm-hmm. the kids did their own. Um, my son, who was 12 at the time, no, yeah, 12 at the time, he had met a, a six-year-old and this little boy was just this little chatterbox and he latched on to Trevor like nobody's business. It was the <laughs> cutest thing. And Trevor was the sweetest boy to this little six-year-old. And so we we went to lunch with his parents and we still keep in touch with them. And it was just wonderful to see these connections form and these bonds form with other kids that travel. Right, right. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it really is is, is a different world, but you're, you're, like say in your regular life, previous, now it's regular life, right? <laughs> but your previous life, I'm thinking, you know, we worry about schedules, we worry about, you know, this much time on the computer, we worry about, oh, you know, extracurricular activities, all these sort of things that I, I would think you're exploring that it actually takes care of itself. A lot of it does. The screen time, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. That's probably the toughest one because a lot of their schooling is online. Right. And then they are both major bookworms. They love to read. Mm -hmm. And when you're living in Southeast Asia, you really, the access to books that are in English, right. It's not there. (laughs) So they both read on the computer Mm -hmm. or on the device. And so it is a little bit, that's a, that's a tough one. But you know, as far as the extracurricular, it's like, no, we try to throw in activities you know, make sure that there's some physical activity. Um, My son loves to run. So he and my husband usually run together. Um, I try to do things with my daughter. 
Um, and it, it, it is a little bit of a mix because we do have a business. And so we run that and, mm -hmm. you know, still try to get their homeschooling in and they're both bright kids. And so they do a lot on their own, but they do still need the interaction of the parent. Right. And wearing that dual hat, sometimes, you know, you got to put on the teacher hat um, right. to, <laughs> to kind of do that. <laughs> you switch hats a lot, um, but it, a lot of it does take care of itself. Yeah. And, you know, like we don't worry about like social studies to be, <laughs> to be very honest. Right. We don't worry about social studies because we're like, you know what, they're picking up all kinds of things that they would never pick up in right. a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do they ever, are they wishing to go back to the States at some point or at this point, everybody's just in the life, like you're just living it day to day, what life is. Right. So we ask, we definitely mm -hmm. check in with them. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you feeling? How are you liking this? You know, things are different. Sometimes they have to share a room mm -hmm. and that wouldn't have happened if we were in Kansas. Right. Um, and so like we check <laughs> in with them, like, what do you think of this? Do you want to go back to the States? And the answer that we get is they want to go back for Christmas. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> because Christmas, I mean, Christmas was always our holiday. Right. And it was always spent around family. And so I think they missed the camaraderie of the large family gathering of, you know, grandparents and mm -hmm. aunts and uncles and their cousins. Right. And really, I think that's it. I, they miss the Christmas cookies. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good reason to fly all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. We, and we haven't had an oven frequently to where we can bake. Uh, we did one time when we were in Hanoi in Vietnam. And so you know, then it's like, okay, well, we don't have all of the appliances that we're used to, you know, we don't have the mixer and we don't have, we couldn't find baking powder to save our lives. Right. So it's like, okay, how do we make this work? And, and we made cookies and they were happy. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love yeah. It. So it's, you know, it's finding the things that are really important to them mm -hmm. and kind of bringing them in, you know, making sure that we have those at least some of the time. Right. Yeah. You know, so the home baked cookies, um, one of the silly things for us is peanut butter. Like oh. we're like all addicted to peanut butter. So, yeah. you know, we'll go out of our way and we will pay the extra money to have imported <laughs> peanut butter. Because There's some things that, yes, yes. Some we, things are just like, why. yeah, you can't take them off the table. Right. Um, <laughs> I love it. That is so funny. So what do you think has been um, the hardest part for you in parenting a different way than how I'm assuming how you were raised both? Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I was raised. You know, I was raised. You know, it's very you know normal, right? Things are right. in a box, and here's the path. I think for me, one of the toughest things was the realization that I needed to change my own beliefs. Um, so one of the things from my own upbringing is I knew probably before I ever started kindergarten right. that I was going to go to college. Mm -hmm. that was a given it was right. programmed in it was there's there's no other way right you knew and the life plan <laughs> exactly and so when I had my children that's my plan for them right mm -hmm. this is the way you do it right you go to you know you get good grades you get in a good college you get good grades there and you get a good job and this is the plan and even before we left I realized that I can't have this plan for them anymore and even the college plan, right? Like I went to college, I got a good grades, I got a good job from it. And I had to kind of change that thinking. I remember my husband asking me, he's like, you know, what would you think if Trevor didn't go to college? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, you have to accept something as very different from how you grew up. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember thinking about it, I'm like, well, okay, he's supposed to go to college. And then I'm like, well, what is the purpose? You know, the purpose is this path mm -hmm. or it's a different path, you know, a completely different path. And, you know, how does that path look? And I was like, okay, well, it can be completely different. And so am I so holding on to the fact that my child, children need to go to college and I'm not. Right. I, you know, I love from, it. It's our, it, the hardest part is our own stuff, right? Yeah. It's our own stuff that we bring to the table and, and it's that delving in and, and realizing, hmm you know, it, all the shoulds, all the coulds, all you must. And, and then even I'm thinking all the fears that come up, like, oh my God, what if I'm ruining their life by this choice? What if I'm really, you know, things that you kind of go, it's, it's okay. It's actually all right. Yes. 
Definitely. I mean, yes. Are they are they being damaged by not having the daily inters, interactions with other kids of their own age? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. is that detrimental to them? And you know, we try to hook up with other families right. where we're at, and that's not always possible. Mm-hmm. It's not always easy to find Western you know, Western families, people that speak English right. that they can communicate with. But they've made friends with people that they don't speak the same language with. Yeah. Um, we were in Vietnam. We were blessed to be in Vietnam during the largest part of the pandemic. We were there for 18 oh months. Yes, you did this um, right before. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah, we were like. Was, uh, the world testing you going, are you sure? And you're like, yeah, you had to be really grounded to say, yes, we're still sure, right? Absolutely. And I really think we were so blessed to be there because we went to Vietnam on a three-month visa. And we were on our third month when they started shutting things down. Right. And we had, we literally had probably 12 hours to make the decision to try to leave the country or try to extend our visa. Uh-huh. And it was a very, I mean, it was stressful. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> the the un- real unknown, right? <laughs> the very, yes, very real unknown. All of these countries were closing their borders and we're like, okay, do we try to leave or do we try to stay? And we made the decision. The, decision to try to stay and it was there was a higher being that you know something was guiding us to stay there and we were so grateful to have been there and had that opportunity to spend 18 months in a country that really we never intended to visit um oh <laughs> yeah, vietnam <laughs> vietnam for us because and this is another thing that we've learned too you know our programming from going to school in the states you know, Vietnam, what is it? You know, it's this, it's this clash, right? It's this conflict, you know, Americans invaded Vietnam and, you know, dropped bombs and did all these atrocities to the Vietnamese people. And, you know, there's all the conflict within the U S about us even being in Vietnam. So it's this whole negative. I mean, my father actually went to Vietnam during the war. He was Mm. in the army. So all these negative things and, we land there and we had educated the kids about it beforehand because we're like, okay, we're going to a country that they may very well hate us for being Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had the, we had right. Yeah. Good for you. Those are sort of setups that the the kids wouldn't know that. Yeah. Right. They hadn't ever been taught that in school. They had Mm -hmm. left school before the, they got to Vietnam War in history. Right. Um, and we jokingly said, well, maybe we should say we're from Canada because nobody hates Canadians. Right? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but we went there and we said, you know what, we're Americans. And it was the most incredible thing. Honestly, it was eye opening. Is people embraced us, they loved us, and we're like, we're confused. My husband, right. John, and I are just confused. And so we got to know some people well enough that we could have this conversation. And we're like, why don't you hate Americans? Mm -hmm. And the answer that we got was, oh my gosh, (laughs) it's a completely different cultural mindset. Their response, every single one of them, that was in the past. And I didn't make those decisions. You know, those decisions were made by someone else. And that was in the past. And we look forward. And so we don't hate Americans. We don't blame them for dropping bombs. I mean, there's still craters there. They're still going around. Like you're not allowed to walk in very remote areas because there's still unexploded ordinances wow. from the Vietnam War, yeah. Yeah. which they call the American War. <laughs> oh, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. It makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but it's something you wouldn't know. And so it was so heartwarming to hear this philosophy Mm. and I was like wow it's so counter to the American philosophy that I grew up with was that you always find blame Mm -hmm. you know you blame someone else and you know there's Americans that still despise the Japanese for Pearl Harbor that Mm. happened before most people were born you know most people that are alive now it happened before that and there are still people that hold that grudge against the Japanese. And here you have the Vietnamese people who, you know, everyone was involved in this, you know, they lost so many lives. 
and they embraced us like with open arms. I mean, strangers inviting us into their home, offering us food and drink and wanting to get to know us, take pictures with us. <laughs> it was the most welcoming of cultures. The people were just phenomenal. Wow. And we never would have had that experience if we hadn't been there for that 18 months of time. So now knowing what you know, um, do you wish you did it earlier? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It has been such a, such a change, just a trans, uh, excuse me, transformation mm -hmm. for myself to realize that I didn't have to be on this path. Yeah. You know, I didn't have to follow the same teachings that I learned from my parents, mm -hmm. you know, and they, I hold nothing against them. You know, they did yeah. what yeah. they knew to be best. And, but I realized that, you know, my life was so constrained because of it. And my children's mm -hmm. lives were so constrained because of what I was imprinting on them. Mm -hmm. And so changing this to go into a more intentional life, you know, intentionally choosing what's most important to us, scheduling those things, scheduling in a loose sense yeah, no, <laughs> into, yeah, our, yeah. into our day mm -hmm. and living with that. It's been so there's just so much more <laughs> yeah yeah i love i quoted at the beginning before you we were on you know your quote about i wanted to live my life of my own choosing yeah. and i'm feeling from you too that that is also what you want for your children that they're allowed absolutely. to live the life of their own choosing you know, that, absolutely there's, there's and our, no our changes whole... in the world yeah yeah, our whole center of belief about that, you know, from going to where, okay, you have to go to college to, you know, earn a degree so you can have your life to, okay, you have to find something that you're passionate about, that you want to do, that you love to do, that will earn you an income. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't yeah. Need, I don't intend to support you your entire <laughs> life. <laughs> no, but it's real, real stuff, you know. Real life. Absolutely. And so, you know, we embrace, you know, my son loves coding, computer coding. I don't know where he got this from, <laughs> but it's like, you know, let's embrace this. So you know, he's taken a class from Harvard University about computer coding. And it's like, great. You would not have been able to do that if we were in Kansas. It wouldn't have maybe even been a thought that there's another option, right? Exactly. In Kansas, that there was even like, hey, let's find you courses that excite you. Let's, let's pull from right. that. Right, because it's, you know, go to school and do your homework. And okay, if you're in sports or extracurricular activities, then, you know, that just takes up the time. And now it's just so much freer with our time. You know, they still do their schooling. You know, we're, we still hit on all the basics, the math, the English, right, right. the science and all of that. But we don't focus on, you know what, you are in the classroom for eight hours a day. Yeah. They're not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and really because they get to go at their own pace, they don't have to be, yeah. you know, my daughter's advanced like two years in, in school already, mm -hmm. you know, the two years that we've been, she's gone two year two years ahead of where wow. she should be. Yeah. yeah. So on her it's, pace, her way of living. At her pace. Her, yes. Yeah. And, you know, we encourage, but we don't push, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's a very different sense of learning. And really our focus has been since embracing the homeschooling to get them to love to learn and to know how to learn on their own so that this becomes a lifelong pattern for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So thanks so much. This is awesome. So my final question is the, if you go back to you, Karen, when you first mm -hmm. held your baby boy, um, what advice would you impart now knowing what you know, what would you tell young Karen? I would tell her to not be so worried. <laughs> I was I was a very nervous first time parent, right? Um, but I would also tell her to open her eyes to different possibilities. That there's so much more out there. That you know, I was still in this very narrow mindset, and so just open up your eyes to possibilities, explore them, embrace them, and your life will be so much richer. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing your story. And you, there, I have so many other questions that I'm trying to stay with parenting because I want to go, how did this and how about this? And I was saying at the beginning before, before we pushed record, you know, I had this idea from when uh, mine was small um, to 
go to Mexico, to live in Mexico was a, a, my, a dream of mine because I love, love that country and the people. And there was so many, sh I wasn't brave enough. I wasn't brave enough to say, I'm going to do it. And I was also so projected in the future, all, all my fears, all society's fears, all of my in-laws fears, my mother, everybody's fears of, wow, you know, but what about, what about, what about, right? And so uh, I really, really admire that there was, um, that you did it, that you did the step. And, and I totally believe that in my heart that this, you know, we take these steps of bravery or we take these steps of courageousness of living our life. Those are the lessons kids get. We don't have to preach it. We don't, we Absolutely. do it, right? We, we find saying, wow, look how happy mom is. Like, you know, look how, wow, we get to just, I don't know, go for a little walk that normally wouldn't have maybe happened or explore things. So uh, thank yeah. you so much. It was absolutely one little story. We yeah. before we left Vietnam, we knew we were leaving, and so we said, "Okay, we want to go walk down the coast." Mm -hmm. it was absolutely white, beautiful white sand beach, crystal blue waters. I mean, paradise. Right. And we went with our kids, and we we just said, "Okay, we're going to spend the day doing this," and they were super excited. And at one point, we're on this beach. We're the only ones on this beach. The water is absolutely like glass smooth. I'm going to close my eyes so I can picture it. I want that beach. <laughs> it's like perfectly glass smooth. The sun's out. I mean, it was just the most incredible day and we're all swimming. And my husband and I just look at each other and we're like, is this real? Like we need to pinch ourselves. And we shared it with our son who was 14 at the time. And just the wisdom of knowledge from him. It was so incredible. He said, you know, this is a great day. No doubt about it. This is a wonderful day. But I think my sister and I don't have to pinch ourselves. It's not so phenomenal to us because, you know, for us, the two years that we've been on the road is a big part of our lives. And you guys lived, you know, a more normal life for much longer. And so this is even more incredible to you. And it just hit me yes. so hard. I'm like, wow, you, you really get this. Yeah. That, and he was, you know, appreciative, you know, oh, acknowledging yeah. sure. that, you know, this is gorgeous, this is, but he's like, this is our reality. This is the part <laughs> yeah. of what we, you know, this is, you know, something we can yeah. appreciate every day, not on a vacation. Right. And it just made me blossom inside. Cause I'm like, yes, this is the right Amazing choice. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Beautiful. absolutely. Excellent. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. And for our watch watchers and listeners, <clears throat> please subscribe. And all of Karen's information and ways you can reach her. And she's got some super exciting programs about how we can do that, how we can financially choose differently, right? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll all be in, in the links below. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to following your journey, Karen. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me on, Annie.